Hello, Hamish here from Mortgages Online. I've got Hamish Firth with me, and we're talking about changes, uh, new government development stuff changing. Hamish Firth, the expert. With yeah, Hamish. Good. Hamish, good. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Um, I think we can safely say that there has been not yet a change in government, but certainly uh, a change in direction by the way people have voted. Uh, and that's going to bring about changes to the way planning uh, is sort of administered and the direction that changes to the RMA. And who would have thought that in some places there'll be less development heading into a national government, Hamish? Yeah, and I think that's probably being driven if we look at what's called an Auckland Plan Change 78, which was sort of a uniform rezoning up to three levels, was that I think the national government took a big step back uh, and said, we've already got the unitary plan, which the national government, the previous national government helped put in place, and it's working quite well. We don't need more. So somewhere like Meadowbank, for example... What kind of changes do you think we could envisage here? Well, Meadowbank already was rezoned for intensification, but a lot of it would have been uh, two, maybe three stories, but uh, a smaller amount of building coverage. Uh, What the new rules proposed was sort of a blanket increase in building coverage, a blanket increase in height, and a sort of a reduction in height to boundary. So we're sort of going to fit a lot more bulk on uh, I think people can breathe a lot easier that that's probably going to go. It's going to be repealed. Uh, and I'm suspecting that what the incoming government may look at is intensification along corridors. That's main roads like Remura Road or St. John's Road. Intensification around nodes like Newmarket or um, let's say the Remura Shops and then intensification in the CBD. So they'll probably leave what I would call the existing suburbs as they are uh, and concentrate along the corridors um, and we call them the hubs. Yeah, because we never did see the full impact of the unitary plan. Uh, It was quite early before they went all out and opened it right up. So in some sense, some of those properties might, like the old urban zone, or the new urban zone, um, might become attractive again? Well, more attractive? Because suddenly, you know, three townhouse, three, um, you know, you could do anywhere. Suddenly you're going back to hoping you've got the urban zone. Well, what people, what what's probably be a bit of a misconception is under the current unitary plan, three units per site was also a permitted activity throughout Auckland. So that really hasn't changed. It was just the intensity of development that's proposed that probably frightened a lot of people. Uh, Auckland had a very good formula. It didn't need to be messed with. I'm glad that they're looking to go back to status quo. It won't mean a significantly less amount of development per se. It'll just mean um, it'll be less in your face. Well, um, Hamish, thanks for your time. I think that, that gives us a bit of insight. And um, yeah, any, any um, uh, you know, obviously you, you're Mount Hobson Group and you do resource consents and building consents, right, Hamish? And subdivision consents and licenses to occupy and street trading permits and liquor licenses and all that sort of stuff where you have to have an interface with the council. That's what we do every day. It's what we live for, Hamish. So you you talk to the, you deal with the council, so we don't have to, which is a very noble. <laughs> we 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 try. Um, I don't think there'll be a knighthood for services for helping people getting around the council, but not to worry. Anyway, thanks, Hamish. Thanks for watching. Nice.